My name is Benjamin Flöcke. I'm a senior expert in optical simulations and I'm part of the optical design team at SAIS. When light hits an optical surface, it gets transmitted and reflected. And usually if you have a bare glass, then about 4% of your light gets reflected and only 96% gets transmitted. The purpose of a coating is to influence that, um, re that relation between reflected and transmitted light. You will apply coatings to all lens elements because otherwise your impact on trans transmission would be dramatic. So with, with a bare substrate you use about 4% transmission on every optical surface. And that doesn't sound much, but it adds up if you have a modern lens with maybe 15 elements and you use 4% on, on every surface, you will lose more than two stops of light. So optical coatings have to be applied to every optical surface in the system. There is a large variety of coatings. So coatings can go from a single layer and that has been what has been done um, like almost 85 years ago. Two very complex coatings that involve uh, a large number of layers, up to 100 layers if you want to build a mirror. Optical coating can be anything from a single layer to a very complex multi-layer of thin films that you apply on an optical surface. Those films have different thicknesses and different chemistry, and the film itself can be really, really thin. So the, the whole coating stack um, is on the order of maybe a hundredth of a cent grain, or 350 times smaller than a, than a human hair. And the individual layers can go down to only a couple of nanometers, which is maybe 20, 30 atomic layers. So it, you need really, really high precision for that. Coatings were actually invented at size. In 1935, Alexander Smakula filed a patent and he found that if you bring a single layer of a certain substance on a lens surface, you can significantly reduce the reflection of that surface. From then it went on and on, so about 15 years later, the first multi-layer coating was introduced and that was further and further developed and is now known as T-star coating. We do optical simulations in order to get a prediction of the look of the ghosting of a lens. And then we design special coatings and apply them in the right positions of the lens to really get that look in the end. Reducing reflections in the lens starts early in the optical design phase. So even if the optical design is not fixed, we are constantly checking if the light that travels not on the optical path, but on a ghosting path, gets reflected multiple times, so that this light does not get focused on the sensor. And we try to avoid that by um, finding a, a right selection of glasses and radii. And once we did that, we develop certain recipes for coatings that we then apply on the and the optical surfaces. Uh, the warmer look of the, uh, of the Supreme Prime Radiance stems from the new T-Star Blue recipe. This T-Star Blue recipe um, creates a, a blue ghost. So you have blue light reflecting and you take that out of the useful light. That means that your final image then gets a bit warmer. So if you use a completely uncoated lens, you get two effects. One, your transmission drops dramatically. So for a, for, for a normal modern lens design, the, the transmission would drop by probably more than two stops. And that is not so significant if you don't have a light source in the image, your, light, your picture just, just gets darker. But once you have a light source in the image, you get huge flare contribution. And this will be uncontrollable, white, and will con completely um, kill the contrast in your image. We don't uncoat lenses, because uncoating lenses means that you introduce a lot of damage to the lens surface. So if the surface already had an end reflective coating on it and you remove that, you introduce 
lots of scratches and damage to the surface that, that would um, render a lot of unwanted artifacts. The result of uncoated lenses would be rather unpredictable and you would always end up with those white strong ghosts that you really don't want.